Okay, welcome back to tutorial two. It's after we were drawing loops of walls. So we're basically we were going through and showing you how to join up walls. Very simple. And from these walls, there's a reason why we started from walls, and that is so we can create other things like roofs from these walls. Okay, so if I use my select tool or spacebar and I select a wall, I can right click a wall. And if I go down to see the little plus there, that, that means that's a plus big tool. And I want to go, I want to generate here roof from walls. And if I click with the left button, it's going to generate a roof from all of my collect selected walls. Okay. And inside of here, we have the uh, whether it's going to be a pitch or ratio, depending whether you're metric or imperial. Uh, you can type in the name of the pitch. You can change the type of roofing that you want to use. So I can use metal. And this is the fascia, which I'll explain to you. I'm just going to go through and look, don't worry about selecting all these things and understanding what they all mean because I'll explain them to you shortly. And I'm just going to go submit. Okay, and what happened was is it drew a roof on top of my walls and that's because my walls are a loop. I'm going to show you what happens if I had a wall that wasn't a loop. And you'll notice in the last tutorial I said trying to make sure that you make a loop, so walls, generate, roof from walls. Walls don't appear to form a loop. Okay, So if I go control Z and I undid that and I went right click, walls, generate, roof from walls it comes up and allows me to do it now I'm just going to change the roof pitch on this one here which makes it a steeper pitch and I go down to the bottom and I click submit Okay, we can do a lot more with these roofs however just go through and get used to using the standard tools because when you come up with a problem you can go back to these two tutorials and you can roof from walls And on this one, I'm going to change my overhang of my eave. So let me explain what that is. The overhang, this is an eave, okay, or a suffete. And the distance from here to here is actually the overhang outside of the brickwork. However, you'll notice that we're drawing double walls here. So this is the veneer wall. So this is usually timber or wood, and this is usually brickwork. So the overhang is actually based from here outwards, okay? So if I change my overhang to 900, or Imperial, whatever you're using. And I can include gutter or not, or I can also change my suffete type. I can change it to raked. I can change my fascia to plum or angled. I'm going to stay with plum. And I can also go through and change my type of gutter. And you'll notice there's locations available. And I can go submit. And I'll just show you what happened with the eave overhang. So now the distance from the outside of the wall to here is 900 minus the thickness of the brick. Okay, And my eave lining is raked. You can see there that it goes up at an angle, whereas this is level. Okay, And that happens in houses regularly all over the world. Okay, I'm going to show you one other thing that we can do with roofs here is we can I'll create this roof here, so I'm going to go right click, walls, generate, roof from walls. Now you'll notice that it creates a little face here. I can move where this face is. So with SketchUp we have a thing called a face, which you'll notice that's dotted. And we actually have edges on the side of a face. Notice that's called an edge. I can move this edge out. So if I go to here, I've got Move Tool. And if I wanted to move this edge, I can go and move it out. And I'm actually looking for something for it to line up because I want it to line up with the house. You'll notice it's moving that edge. And I can type in a distance. If I moved over here, it's not what I'm after. I'm trying to keep it on my axes. You can slightly see that that, that uh, is green there. And I can type in a measurement now. I could say, well, I want this to be uh, 15 hundred millimeters out okay and essentially what this allows me to do is to create my roof outside of my walls so I need to go back and select my face and if I go down to the bottom so I use my spacebar and I clicked on it select 
and I go submit. Okay, and notice now my roof is sticking outside of there. We can also go back and change materials inside of there. So, or you can also create roofs wherever you want. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to undo it again. And I have a face selected. If I didn't have that face selected, it won't create a roof for me. If I select it, I can go back to my roof tool. Keep an eye on what my mouse buttons are doing here if you're not sure where to click. And just, uh, I find it easy to have two screens so you can watch this video while you create them. I can also go and change the type of materials that I'm going to use. So at the moment, uh, if I go up here, you'll notice I'm using a metal roof, which would be some more of a corrugated iron. And we can go into here and we can look through our corrugated iron types. And we can click here to go through lots of different colours. Or if we keep on scrolling down, we'll have different profiles and we keep on scrolling down. There's a lot of products available here and I'm going to choose this one here. Actually I might even choose another colour. Okay, uh, let's get back and have a look at see if we can find a colour that's more distinct. Let's go down. We use this uh, dark grey. Okay, and I'm going to go submit and now you notice it put a different type of metal profile on my roof. These roofs can also be changed from, this is a, a standard hip roof, however at the moment just stick to the easy stuff and uh, the next video I'm going to show you is going to show you how to create slabs or floor underneath my walls. Alright guys, hope it helps, cheers.